Hello there. Welcome to the Monday bonus video. Don't usually see you on Monday, but here we all are. And I'm wearing my bonus video turtleneck, which is also still a black turtleneck, but it is slightly roomier and also slightly more comfortable. So that's fun. The holidays are certainly upon us. And with the holidays comes holiday shopping. And with holiday shopping comes the deluge of gift guides and recommendations of what you should buy for all your friends and family. And this is another one of them for you. <laughs> I'm assuming if you watch this channel that you are a coffee enthusiast to some degree, and you might possibly have have other coffee enthusiasts in your close circle that you are currently shopping for. So I want to make it kind of easy for you to find some fun items that you may have seen before or may be new to you that I think most coffee enthusiasts would benefit from and enjoy. And I know I certainly have over the years. Now, everything we talk about today and everything that I highlight will be collected and linked all in a very nice blog post. That's gonna be one of the top links in the description. So it'll be very easy for you to find things if you see anything that you happen to like. That blog post is gonna exist on morgandrinkscoffee.com, which is a very exciting thing to say because as some of you know from Instagram, I very recently relaunched Morgan Drinks Coffee. It is now the uh, gonna be my home of sorts and it's something we are very slowly building out. On there are the beginnings of some blog posts. I'm gonna be doing very regular blog posts on there as well as a storefront with brands that I am very familiar with and also have really good relationships with and really like their stuff. This is a little bit of a transparency moment we're having here because this is a gift guide and because there will be links. I wanna be very clear that some of the links to some of these products and I'll be clear which will link to my storefront. With that comes a slight profit on my end, although a majority of it is going to the, the original owners. This is more of like a, a compilation of products. There will also be other links that link off to other sites. Those will not be affiliate links. There is no benefit or monetary value coming from my end. None of this is sponsored. This is just a fun stuff that I like. I hope that made sense as a disclaimer. And again, I will describe all of that in a written form down below, just so you're totally clear. And I, I think it's important to lay that all out early on. That being said, we have a gift guide to get into. We have a lot of stuff to look at, so let's get started. The first thing we're gonna talk about today is brewers. I have a couple. Here are three brewers that I think are very interesting and very nice to have in your assembly of brewers. Over here, we certainly have the most beautiful of the bunch. This is the Origami Dripper. It uses conical filters. It comes in a wide array of colors and it is truly a beautiful dripper. This is one of the brewers that is certainly in my heavy rotation of how I use at home. Usually I will use an Origami or a V60 or a Kalita. These are some of my favorites. They result in very clean brews. They are fairly easy to use and also just aesthetically, if you have folks who are very into design, I think these are a great choice. Next up, we have a classic, the Kalita Wave. This brewer right here has a flat bottom. It uses for the filter. It's a very, very nice brewer. It's very accessible. It's very easy to approach. It is very easy to get a good brew out of this. And it's one of my favorites for people who are just kind of like breaking into uh, pour overs. I think this is a very solid, very good choice. And then we have this thing over here, <laughs> which is a little bit different, but also very fun. This is an AeroPress. However, it is the travel AeroPress. So if you have folks who are on the go a lot or who either do camping or driving or like like anything where they're taking coffee with them, this is a really great option because you take this off, every part that you need, sans hot water, you do need to provide your own hot water, exists inside. It's like a Mary Poppins bag <laughs> of coffee brewing equipment. And also the containment unit here doubles as your cup. Truly the AeroPress for how many misadventures I have had with it personally is a really fantastic brewer. And this travel AeroPress, I think is just a great little gift item, whether it is something that goes under the tree or perhaps in their stocking. You don't really realize how much you wanna have an easily accessible travel brewer with you until you need one and you don't have one. So this is great for at home, but it's also great on the go. Those are my brewer recommendations. I'm gonna get some drinkware now. I've got some drinkware. Starting over on this end, we'll start with the uh, the smallest in size. These are the Joey Espresso Cups from Fellow Products. They have a very heavy bottom. They are ceramic. They feel great to hold and they are the perfect size for espressos. I believe these are about three ounces, if not, three and a half ounces. So a good double shot fits very nicely in here. I have had these products for, I want to say three, if not more than three years now. I actually won them in a throwdown very early on uh, in my in my latte art barista life, which I don't do throwdowns too much anymore. But when I did, these were one of the things that I got. To this day, these are some of my favorite cups to drink espresso out of. They've got a good amount of heft to them. And they also have a really nice design of the lip where it's very rounded. It's very curved. It is a very like good tactile experience to experience experience espresso through <laughs> at the risk of saying experience three different times. Now, moving on to filter coffee, 
we have some other fun options. Of course, you can always drink it out of a traditional mug. However, in the coffee space and in the drinkware space, there are plenty of cups that are specifically designed with your drinking experience and also your sensory experience in mind. These two are a little bit more traditionally mug shaped. They are for filter coffee and they are made by origami. And if you'll note, they're the same folks who made the drippers we just talked about. And I suppose if you wanted to be really specific with someone, you could get them a matching drinking cup to their dripper. These are both described as sensory tasting cups. They are made specifically to enhance your drinking experience, both in the material they're made out of, both in the way they are formed with like the edges of the lip to kind of form to your mouth. And also they're made to kind of funnel the aromatics and all the lovely smells you have into your nose. So you're able to take those in simultaneously with drinking your coffee. Overall, it's just a, a very, very nice drinking experience if that's something you care about. Now we have these over here. And <laughs> no, it's not lab equipment. These are also cups. These are the Kruv tasting cups. Now I've talked about these a long time ago. You probably haven't seen them in a while, but I have had these cups for, I wanna say about two years now. They're super interesting. They are, again, designed in a way to enhance your drinking experience specifically with coffee. And if that sounds a little bit strange to you, you can think of it kind of similarly to perhaps like cocktails or like harder liquors uh, where you're really like serving them in a very specific glass to the type they are. Think about like cups that you would serve like whiskey or scotch or like whatever have you in it. Those cups are designed to amplify the experience of drinking those liquids. Same principle here. They are glass and you will be pouring hot liquid into them. However, these are double walled so you can pick them up without any risk of hurting your hands. Now, these two come as a set. One of them is designed to be better made for coffees that are a bit darker in profile and roast. And one of them is designed to fit into a lighter and fruitier profile of coffee. They're very interesting. They do different things and it's a very fun taste experiment and to have coffee in both of them side by side. Probably recognize this thing over here. <laughs> this infamous little cup here is the Ember Mug. This has been around for a couple years now. It has had its fair share of reviews, both from myself and many, many other folks. And the consensus is it's pretty good. I've been using an Ember Mug not this one specifically, but I have a couple others. I've been using them for quite a few years now. I'm personally a big fan of them. I do think they're a little bit of a bougie purchase. Like if you purchase someone one of these, probably a pretty important person in your life, they are a bit more on the expensive side, but as a product, as a smart mug, as a self-heating and maintaining mug, they're kind of the nicest that's out there right now. The Ember, of course, comes with an app that you download and then you pair your mug to your phone. And through that app, you are able to control the temperature that your coffee is sitting at inside the mug. Let's say you take a while to drink your coffee, but you want it to stay at 130 degrees all afternoon long. You can do that very well with this. They are super well designed. They feel great. They last for quite a while. And yeah, I think these are a very nice gift for people. And there's a cat on the back counter. <laughs> and how long she has been there, I don't know. You've got to like pretend that you don't get on the counter in front of everyone. Okay. That was the drinkware category. Let's continue on. I have got two coffee books in front of me that I really, really love, and I think many of you also would as well. One of them you might be pretty familiar with. This is a recent release, and it's one that has become kind of a staple on my shelf. This is the book, How to Make the Best Coffee at Home by fellow YouTuber and world barista champion and just wonderful person, James Hoffman. I think this is a book that anyone can benefit from, whether you are a coffee professional or if you're just like starting out with coffee. This is a wonderful guide to basically everything you would ever possibly need to know about brewing coffee at home, whether it be science, information, brewing methods, anecdotes. It's just a lovely, lovely compilation. The second one is a little bit different. This one is fiction. This is a book called Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. It is a lovely, lovely book. This is fiction. This is a collection of interwoven stories all based around a cafe. I would say, like, I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to like give anything away, but I will say if you enjoy any of my short content, be it the vignette or barista sketches, I think you'll really, really love this book. It's just fantastic. I don't have another word to describe it other than lovely. It is a feel good, friendly hug of a book. These are my book recommendations. Do with it what you will. Now, this is what I'm going to call the tools section. And specifically, these are items that I think would be very applicable to folks who are a little bit more serious serious into coffee, whether that be on the brewing side or perhaps also the barista side. These are for folks who have a little bit of experience, kind of know what they're doing, but are looking to level up their gear or their coffee game. We'll start on this side. This right here is called the Mellow Drip. And it's a very, very interesting tool that I've recently come to love quite a bit. This is for your pour over brewing. Now, when you are pouring your coffee from, let's say, a gooseneck kettle, let me go grab one. 
we'll just use our cup here. When you're pouring, you're causing agitation in the bed of coffee that you're pouring into. This can be a good thing when used appropriately. Agitation is an important part of extraction. However, sometimes for some brews, you want less agitation. Sometimes you want more control. Sometimes you're just not able to achieve that yourself. This is a really, really interesting tool that creates different form of your water falling over your bed of coffee. It's a more even dispersion. Let me demonstrate. You pour into the mellow drip and then it creates the sort of rainfall effect. It's very interesting. It's a fun tool to mess around with. It changes how you brew coffee and it's kind of a fascinating experience. Now, some of you may recognize it in a slightly different form. Actually, one of my good friends, Alika Lifty, who is the two-time United States Brewers Champion and also took second. He was the runner up at the World Brewers Championship. He used a slightly modified version of the Mellow Drip. He had it on like a lifted platform. So he didn't have to hold it by this little like stick here. It was kind of integrated into his brewer, but he used these they're very very cool so fun little brewing tip now this right here is a lot hair pitcher and this is kind of fun because not all lot hair pitchers are made the same in fact lot hair pitchers are kind of similar to paint brushes in the sense that they come in a wide variety of sizes and shapes and they all kind of do different things this one specifically is from slow pour supply and it has what's called a round spout on it let me um grab a different one so you can see them side by side Here's a slightly different picture next to it. So as you can see, this has a much sharper spout and then this one has a round spout. A round spout is like my preferred pitcher type to use. This is a good deal wider than most spouts you'll see on like standard cafe pitchers, whether that be rattleware or rhino wear. This has a lot more contour to its shape. And with that, it gives you a different level of control. Oh my gosh, stabbing myself <laughs> on the WDT. It gives you a different type of control over your milk flow, leading you to be able to do different shapes and different flows and all sorts of stuff. Again, it's like a paintbrush. Your, your latte is your canvas. And sometimes you want a different tool to do a different design. I experienced a lot of growth in my latte when I started actually paying attention to the type of pitchers I was using and getting pitchers that fit my La Terre style. And I think it's something that can spur on other people's improvement if they start switching up their pitchers as well. I also think it's just a good thing to be able to pour with a wide array of tools. But this is a really lovely pitcher. And if you'll note, it's also a very nice color. This is the color Cinder and it is the recent uh, release from Slow Pour Supply. This is also kind of a Morgan Drinks Coffee exclusive for the time being. So it's not really accessible to like the wide public yet. But if you go to that link that I'll have down below, you will be able to find it. This right here is a puck screen. <laughs> this sits on top of your espresso pucks. After you get your portafilter, you dose in your coffee, you tamp it, put this on top, and it helps again with water dispersion over the puck. It's a cool little extraction tool that has pretty recently gotten really popular. Fun little thing to add to your puck prep. We then have the WDT that I continually am stabbing myself with. This is a tool that is probably also familiar to you if you are anywhere on the internet in the coffee world right now. These have certainly seen quite a resurgence, especially in like the home brewers segment. This is a nifty little tool that stands for Weiss distribution technique. What it does is that when you make little circles with it deep into your espresso puck, it breaks up any of those clumps that are gonna alter and or create problems within your puck and your extraction. So this is for espresso and it works very, very well. Frankly, if I was given the choice between one of these and something like a maybe a little bit more traditional distribution tool, I would choose this. And if it makes any sort of difference at all, this is actually what I used in the World Barista Championship. Not this one exactly, but a WDT tool, and it worked wonders. It creates really, really consistent and really well extracted espresso. If you're doing it correctly, <laughs> I see quite a few interesting takes on the technique behind this tool. There is some research involved of how to do this correctly, but once you get the technique down, it's pretty great. Next, we have a tamp or a tamper, however you like to say it. This additionally is the tamp I used both at the US Barista Championship and also at the World Barista Championship. And it's called a force tamper. Now this is a spring loaded tamp. Instead of using your own weight to press down, you have your puck in there. And then all you have to do is lock this down and do that. This is a really nice tamp that ensures consistency. It's very easy to use. And overall, I really, really like it. It's a fun little upgrade to a slightly more traditional and manual tamp. And out of all of the, the current spring-loaded tamps out there right now, this is currently my favorite. Next up, we have a little bottle of something. <laughs> this is called Barista Carl's Blend, and it is a very, very cool tool for someone who is into latte art. One thing that is very common in the discussion around latte art and practicing latte art is the amount of waste that goes into it. Because unless you are planning on drinking everything you create, which I don't recommend you do, <laughs> you can run into a lot of waste, both of your espresso and more importantly, your milk. 
because really your only option once you're done pouring is to dump it out. This is a really, really cool formulation. It's a, it's a little serum, I'm gonna call it, that when added to water will create the exact same texture and consistency of milk. So you steam it the same way, it's water and a couple drops of this. And then once you're done, you're able to practice your latte terret without wasting large amounts of dairy. You shouldn't drink this, to be clear. <laughs> this is not for making edible drinks. However, it's really, really good for practicing and I highly recommend it if you or a barista in your life does a lot of latte terret practice. We talked about something similar on last week's video with the soy sauce and the soap. That's another technique you can use. However, if you don't wanna be using those things, if you would like a, a more elevated and in my opinion, a better version of that sort of solution, use this. And lastly, in this section, we have a milk frother. Now, this is called the Nano Foamer. I've had this for about two years now, and this is my preferred milk frother to use. Now, on most handheld milk frothers, you'll see what kind of looks like a little, a little spirally attachment on the bottom. That's what's gonna be spinning around in a circle and drawing in air. On this one, which is a little bit different, you have this screen right here. It's a very, very fine mesh screen. This allows for a lot more fine control over your milk texture. So this is a handheld frother that requires a little bit more practice, but overall, once you get used to it, you get a much better texture, especially for pouring latte art. It's battery powered, it's very easy. Just a, <laughs> a handheld frother, but a slightly elevated one that allows for a lot more control. I've said a lot of words and I've described a lot of products, hopefully accurately. <laughs> Let's move on to our next section. Our final section today, I'm calling miscellaneous, <laughs> I suppose. So we will start on this end and work our way that way. Over here, we have my favorite on the go drinking vessel. Now this is the Carter Move Mug from Fellow Products. You have probably seen this around. They are very popular and they are also very great. They come in a wide Wide array of sizes. I have most of them. However, the one that is, and I mean, even on this side, it's a little dinged up, but this is the least dinged up out of all of mine. This is their eight ounce size. They come in a very wide array of colors. Surely there is something for everyone out there. And inside you have this little, I don't know what to call this, kind of a stopper of sorts, but this makes it so you're able to put your Carter Move in the car with you. And it really doesn't experience any splashing at all. Like this is a very like safe thing to have next to you while you drive. Of course you have a nice, sealable lid. You have a really nice lip here to drink out of. And all around, it's just a really solid mug. These keep things super warm for a really long amount of time and they also keep things super cold. So iced or hot, you're good to go with this. I have gone through quite a few travel mugs in my time. I think I have quite a collection right now that I'm kind of scared to go through, but through and through over the last like three years, the Carter Move mug is what I've always come back to. Now we have some spoons. <laughs> you have also probably seen these before. These are the uh, cupping spoons from Umeshiso. The company is run by Umeko Motoyoshi, who is a good friend of mine, and they've been making these spoons for a hot second, and they're awesome. You will see these all over the industry. These are called the Big Dippers, so they are the largest of all of the spoons that they offer, and they have a very, very wide base in here that is made for coffee cupping. They also offer a couple other different sizes. They have the Little Dippers. They're a little bit smaller in size. They have like a deeper, a deeper basin, so it's not as flat as this one. Just kind of your preference on which type of spoon you prefer. They also have a couple different colors. I would say the Rainbow Spoons are definitely their most popular, but if you prefer black or rose gold or just gold, they also have those. If you have a a person in your life that does cupping, or if you do cupping and you want to carry around your own essentially custom cupping spoon, it's a very fun thing to do. It's kind of a it's kind of a flex. <laughs> and Umeko spoons are certainly my favorite that are out there right now. Additionally, they also released espresso stirring spoons. So if you are someone who stirs your espresso, and I sure hope you do, I would definitely recommend these as well. It's really all just about elevating the experience. And if there's one thing that coffee people know how to do, it's elevate and complicate a drinking experience. But I'm with them on that. I think it's fun, I think it's enjoyable. And if that is also your cup of tea, then I think you should go for it. I have some more jars over here. These are from Lotus Coffee Products and they are two jars that will help constitute really nice water for you to brew with. Not all water is made equal. Not all water is the same. And considering water is a majority <laughs> of coffee, it's really helpful to have really good water alongside the really good coffee you're brewing. Lotus Products has made it really easy for you to have really nice water. They have different like combinations of minerals that you could purchase and have at home to add to your water to make it the best brewing water possible. Lance Hedrick, who a lot of you probably know as my uh, coach, who also runs a YouTube channel, was involved in these and it shows. They're very nice, uh, very useful and good to have at home. Makes water science pretty accessible to most folks. This one is very fun. This is a limited edition thing. So when this video goes up, I 
I sure hope there are some of these left because they're pretty great stocking stuffers, but if not, hopefully there will be more in the future. This is a collaboration between Urnex and also Umashiso. And inside is not in fact cleaning product, it's nail polish. <laughs> so if you are, like myself, a diehard Urnex fan for their cleaning products and you would like to rep them on your nails, you now can. This is more like a really, really fun coffee industry inside joke than anything. While the nail polishes are great, they are very, very fun. I will say there is something else special about this collab and it's something that I think is also really important about it. This is part of a collaboration between Umashiso and Urnex that's called Get Psyched. And all of the profits that come out of this, the products they sell through this collab go towards getting coffee workers uh, psychiatry care. So it's a really, really good purpose, especially in an industry that doesn't often offer like any of those sort of benefits, whether it be healthcare or mental health care. Really cool product for a really cool cause. And then lastly, this is genuinely my last product and it may seem like the most boring, but it's the one I love maybe the most. We have Puro. This is simply a cleaning product. This is a cleaning product for your espresso machine, but you can also use it with like kind of anything. I use this on dishes and really stubborn travel mugs all the time. It's great. It works awesome. And if you have a lot of coffee equipment, you should probably have a bottle of this line around. These last also forever. So if you give someone a bottle of Puro to have in their stocking, chances are you won't even need to gift them a new one next year. This will probably last, this will last a couple Christmases. That was my gift guide, <laughs> full of fun products that I love and I use and hopefully can be helpful in your life or someone else's life. Or maybe you just learned more about products products you see in my videos every day. This was a fun bonus video. Just to recap, I will have everything we talked about today linked in a nice, a nice blog post down below. And also while you're on that blog post, if you wanna check out the rest of Morgan Drinks Coffee, that would be awesome. I'm working really hard to build it out into a resource that is full of blog posts, as well as products I like, and just kind of like housing everything. It's a slow process. It's gonna take a while to get it like all the way where I want it to be, but I just wanna make you all aware of it so you can kind of, kind of track, cause I'm gonna do my best to put some exclusive of stuff on there as well. That was the bonus video. I hope you all had a good time. I hope this was somewhat helpful. I'll see you all on Friday. Friday's gonna be a lot of fun. We have a, a lot of interesting stuff to test. So until next time, I'm Morgan Drinks Coffee. You can find me here on YouTube once a week, plus an occasional bonus video on shorts. And you can also find me on Instagram or TikTok almost every single day. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Hope you have a good shopping season. I'll see you on Friday. Catch you later. Bye everyone.